Welcome to another uh, podcast with the Transcendiates. Uh, my name is Corey Bradford Watts, and this is Aaron Eaves. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Aaron. Thank you. Uh, we are in association with the uh, Swedenborg Foundation and the Center for Swedenborgian Studies. Uh, so, how are you doing today, Aaron? I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, so, what's what's your background? Why why are you here in uh, Pacific School of Religion campus, actually? Yeah, um, <clears throat> so I moved here four years ago to the Berkeley area, to the Bay Area, uh, to come to seminary, and I just finished my MDiv, my Master's in Divinity, over at Star King School for the Ministry, uh, which is a Unitarian Universalist seminary, and yeah, so now I'm here having just finished the degree and uh, working a couple theater gigs until I start my internship as an intern minister at Mount Diablo Unitarian Universalist Church. Oh, congratulations Thank on you. the internship. That's cool. Thank you. Um, so Star King, that's one of the uh, few schools uh, part that are part of the Graduate Theological Union, yep. um, including uh, the Pacific School of Religion, which we're sitting in right now, and um, the Center for Swedenborg and Studies. We have a Jain school, a Jewish school, right? We've got just about all of it. I know. It's, it's actually really cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was one of the big selling points for me. Um, coming to Star King, which is part of the Graduate Theological Union Consortium, was that even though I'm studying with the Unitarian Universalist and I'm looking at ordination through the Unitarian Universalist, that I would have the opportunity to study with the Swedenborgians, that I would have an opportunity to study with the Hindus, to study with the uh, Jew, uh, Jews, to study with the American Baptist, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in my uh, when I finished my degree program, 90 credits, I looked and I had went to like 20 different schools oh, really? um, between schools, centers of learning, seminaries. Like I, I just, I really dip, dipped my toe into everything. Um, <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So quite the journey. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. And it's, you, you wrapped up a few months ago? Yeah, December. December of 2017. Yeah, and uh, so your internship, what does that involve? It's with the Unitarian Universalist Church? Yeah, so it's a pretty big congregation in Walnut Creek, California, uh, or pretty big for Unitarians. Uh, mm-hmm. It's about 500 people. Um, I'll be their intern minister uh, full-time for 10 months, and I'll be doing all of it. So I'll do pastoral care, I'll do um, preaching, uh, uh, leading worship, I'll be sitting on committees, I'll be doing religious education, so it'll be an opportunity to mentor um, under a seasoned minister and to do a little bit, a little bit of it all. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, scared, yeah, excited. Yeah, scary, right? yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I bet. Oh, that's excellent. We were talking about your some of your interests. Yeah. Um, one of which I can't help but geek out about. Sure, uh, sure. You're a dungeon master for uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and yes, there's other yes. names for that position too, right? Yeah, so we were talking the other day about uh, tabletop role-playing games. Um, the most popular one uh, is called Dungeons and Dragons. You've probably heard of it, uh, though there are literally hundreds and hundreds of other titles, almost like video games, that mm-hmm. there's lots of different titles, there's lots of different um, games that you can play. And we that, played a Star Wars one. We played a Star Wars one. That was cool. Um, yeah, and the person who um, helps to lead the story, the sort of primary storyteller, is called a dungeon master, and if you're playing D&D, but uh, in other contexts they'll call it a game master, they'll call it the storyteller, the chronicler, um, the referee, um, and I think that even there, like those different words can kind of uh, help capture a little bit of like what that role is. Mm-hmm. And that's it's quite the creative role, and from what I've heard from you, at least your approach to it. Um, and in fact, you... You mentioned it's almost like it's like small group, like spiritual practice in a way, or, or can be. I think so, yeah. I uh, had a, a really wonderful opportunity over at Star King School for the Ministry a couple semesters ago to, I was doing uh, taking class in religious education and had the opportunity to use my uh, weekly gaming group where I'm the game master, where I'm the, you know, the storyteller, the chronicler, um, and got to use that as a small, small group ministry site. And I got to look at that work that I was doing there and the work that we were doing together um, with my colleagues, uh, actually a a handful of other seminarians, 
and look at look at through the lens of small group ministry through the lens of religious education and um, yeah and that was my project for the year or for the semester hmm. and wrote a paper up on it at the end yeah it was uh, it was really it was really important for me to finally be able to kind of bridge these two uh, disparate worlds these uh, separate worlds of gaming and re- religion which are like two places mm-hmm. where like that have my heart oh that's beautiful and you, and you were telling me a little bit about your journey with that work and how you ended up creating a lot of art and finding like these kind of new avenues for expression through through that role yeah that was really cool yeah um, I mean at first it was Really, when I picked it up and first started doing the um, the dungeon master, the DMing, uh, when I first started doing that, it was really I wanted to play, and you have to have a DM to play. Mm-hmm. So it was like I want to play, so I'll run the game, whatever. I'll run the game to get it going. To get it going, you know. Huh. Um, but then what I, what I didn't realize was once I got into it, it was like, oh, this is a very unique form of art, a very unique form of storytelling where. Everything from writing, almost like a playwright would write a story with the characters and with the conflicts and with the uh, the ups and the downs and the battles and the and the love stories and so on, um, but also almost like a museum curator or something like that who would pick out the right pictures and and setting them in the right way in order to create an effect. So the pictures of the environment, so the pictures of the villains, so on and so forth. Um, so you present those to the the player. Yeah, and yeah. You're, you're like choosing them, designing them. You're mostly because I haven't took it that far. I'm mostly um, finding them on the internet. I'm going to Pinterest or going to different um, websites where there, there's these incredibly talented graphic artists that put their stuff on the internet, and I go through the stuff and find the pictures that capture the tone, that capture the mm-hmm. emotional quality of what I'm trying to go for. And maybe I'll like do a little bit of editing. I'll, you know, edit this out or edit this in or whatever. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. So it's almost like you're cultivating, um, a certain idea for, for the players, your environments, yeah. people. It's world building. World building. It's world building. It's, uh, I mean, it's so, it's so similar to ritual. It's so similar to theater. I mean, it's like for me, like something that I've really come to believe in the last few years as I've been, formally studying uh, religion here at the Graduate Theological Union in Starking, um, that that aesthetics and religion are so tightly woven together, and particularly performance art, is so tightly woven together with religion that like the difference between ritual and and like theater, like it's so for me, like it's so minute the difference. Mm. Um, so it's so to answer your question that yeah, like what I think what I've really found there is this opportunity, this context to create to create experiences for folk. And that to me is also what religion is. It's like how do I make myself a vessel to create an experience for folk that's going to move them, that's going to be meaningful for them, that's going to give them an opportunity for self-expression or for redemption or for a moment of illumination or, or whatever, mm-hmm. or, or just to be a hero and to go, you know, and go like slay the dragon and save the prince and yeah, not the princess, but go save the prince, you know, yeah. like, um, yeah. Well, that's excellent. That's really beautiful. Do you find your, well, actually, I know you find this, you're, you're quite a storyteller, right? You. Do you find that that's like a key avenue of expression for you going forward as you venture out into um, more avenues for ministry? For sure, for sure, yeah. I. It's it's been interesting how much um, tabletop role playing or or D anD D. It's been interesting how much it's really informed my ministry. How, how I found, hmm. how I found. I really, I think I really found formally found my storyteller like role in that. Okay. Um, maybe for the first time, like it's always been there. But I, I never like worked on it. I never like I never honed a craft, you know. Yeah. Like like a good preacher will do over years and years will hone that craft of preaching, mm-hmm. and and then come to you know they find themselves in it. They find themselves. They find God in it. You know, every week of having to wrestle with I have a story to tell and God has a story to tell, mm-hmm. and how how do we meet in the middle and how do I how do I both get myself out of the way and put the work in like the disciplined mm-hmm. work in. 
to create this experience. To help like uplift health, spiritual, yeah. emotional. Yeah, for sure. Health. Yeah. And it's been really interesting how this really unexpected area of D and D of creating these stories for people that it's really I think it was a safe space in a way that it's like oh it's just a game. So like so like go ahead and be a storyteller. Go ahead and be a playwright and a director and a leader. Like go ahead and do that. Like it's just a game. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like you get in the door, right? Because people kind of approach it less formally. Yeah. Uh, like, and yeah. and there's magic in that. There's and like as I'm talking about it I actually just like got hit with the kundalini. Like as I'm talking <laughs> about it that like yeah. something that's really or the holy spirit if you will. Hmm. Um something Sophia. that's Sophia. Sophia. Goddess. Um, something that's really missing for me in like formal religiosity far too often is that we, we come with too serious of hats on that we we're so serious and we, 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 we get in the way, like our, our yeah. pre preconceived notions get in the way of the playfulness of the spirit and mm. the, the transience and the, the, um, mm the uh, dynamism the dynamism of the spirit and yeah mm -hmm. uh, it's and almost it, like it, organic growth or you know yeah i think so so you were saying that when we're true too strict and exacting um we we can't be as creative in religious space or uh, i mean i would i'm arguing that you can't like i want to say that you can't experience god but maybe that's a little, maybe I'm taking it a little too far. But there's certain aspects of God's being that you can't, hmm. is, is what I'm saying. That, that, yeah, that God is, God is constantly in process. God is constantly speaking. That, that God has more to say. And that, that was something that I think um, uh, doing just a game allowed me to... Uh, to allow me to hear God and like hear him say, I want you to tell stories. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, so you found kind of a renewed or invigorated connection with divinity that way? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Huh. And do you think like those lessons could, could inform your like future ministry, maybe in this internship to allow a little more flexibility or... I think so. Yeah. I mean, one of, one of the big lessons that I wrote about in that, in that class when I wrote up my experiences of looking at um, tabletop gaming uh, through a religious education lens was, yeah, and this feels like such a crucial, crucial les uh, lesson for, for, for life, just period, but I think is really going to be really meaningful for ministry of I found something I liked and I just poured myself into it, poured myself into it, and I wanted it to be perfect. But it also, so, so which was really good because it meant that I showed up and it meant that I put a lot into it and I put a lot of care into it and that I created a wonderful experience for my players. And it meant that I had a lot of control. There was a lot of perfectionism going on there. There was a lot of, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of ego. And when, and when a game wouldn't go the way I wanted it to, it, it like hurt and it, and it was discouraging and like made me like feel like oh I'm not good enough and like want to give up and that sort of thing, but because this call I guess I'll call it a call this call to like tell stories had grabbed me so thusly, I made myself continue. I made myself walk that next step through the desert. You know, do that next day through the desert. You know, <laughs> and what I found when I what I found through that process was that it required surrender. Mm -hmm. It required me to get myself out of the way and be like, oh, no, like this, this isn't mine to control. This is mine to influence. This is mine to pour myself into. But if I'm doing this for the other, if I'm doing this for my players, for my friends, like I need to open myself up to that. And when I got on the other side of that, that, that hill, so to speak, I found that I went through this like really, really incredible process of kind of like ego death almost like this little mini little mini ego death and <laughs> that when i came out the other side not only was i a better storyteller and it was a better game for my players better experience for my players like i could just tell and, and they also you know told me but also there was this 
healthy detachment, this almost sort of like non-attachment to like borrow some like Buddhist language. Mm-hmm. That was really beautiful of like, oh, I'm going to tell the next story and it's going to be good. I'm going to throw myself into it and I won't get in my head in the same way. Like it's not about me in the same way that I have this, um, that I guess that flexibility, that there's a little bit of more spaciousness in there. Um, oh. And that was an incredible learning, not only for this this crazy hobby that I'm into, but also <laughs> felt like, oh, that's life right there. Yeah. You know, the stuff you care about, throw yourself into it and let it eat you up. Let it tear you up mm. and let it spit you back out the other side, like resurrected. Oh, yeah. And it's, it sounds like it was a really powerful, like spiritual arc for you to yeah. kind of give up yourself a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah. Wow. Well, because I wanted to control it. I care about it. And also, I'm, like, performing for these people. And I, I want it to be good, you know? So, like, so much of my, my stuff came up. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite an experience. Um, and, when I came, and when I came out the other side, I was like, oh, that was a spiritual experience, as you labeled it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. In the middle of it, I thought I was just being, like, an angsty artist or something. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm taking this too far. Yeah, that yeah. I thought I was, like, that I was taking it too far and I just needed to have tougher skin or that I needed to um, just do what I'm going to do or, or something. Mm. But what I realized was, like, oh, no, like, you showed me how much you cared and I'm showing you the next step. And something has to die. Something has to be let let go of in order to get to that next step. Yeah. And that can be really painful, you know, and can be really counterintuitive to the way I think the way like we live, like as Americans, as first world people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, it sounded like you you kind of had to give up a certain identity or at least like um, yeah. guardedness around like who you were and yeah, and like you said, you kind of humbled yourself in a way it sounds like yeah yeah i mean <laughs> absolutely again you you've you've labeled it correctly better better than i've been able to that yeah, so. that um that i had this idea of what it should be mm. and i and i and i put everything i could into making that idea manifest in the world and what i realized when i got into it was that idea was more it was close. It was close. I wasn't like so far off the mark, you know, hmm. but that idea was more about me and my per- my perceptions than it was about what was actually true. Because I was able to, I, hmm. I was, it was able to bring me back to center and reconnect with like, oh, it's not, in this case, it's not about making the most realistic thing. It was about making the most fun thing. And in, in this particular case, yeah. um, that it's not about like dotting every I and crossing every T. It's about, no, it's about making sure you're saying something um, that's meaningful. Uh, yeah, so, I, so, I, had a, so I, did, I did have to like let something down of like, oh, I'm not the guy who makes realistic stories. I'm the guy who makes good stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and how did, how did your group respond? How did how'd it go? I mean, this was all part of the journey, right? Like while sure, you were, sure, sure, yeah. So this is going like almost yeah. in real time, you know. Like yeah. I, I make the first adventure or the you know the first session, and we run a couple of it, and I can just I can feel I can feel like oh, this is like a little stale, or like it's a little mm-hmm. it's a little clunky. Like oh, I'm not I'm not seeing them light up. I'm not seeing them engaged. I'm not seeing the highs, the lows. Oh, like what's wrong? What's wrong? And eventually, you know, realize. Um, that that I needed to change, that something had to change. Um, and and I did this, you know, eventually got to this whole paradigm shift and then just noticed immediately like, oh, this is moving. Oh, the the bodies and the minds of these people that are sitting around me, they're engaged. They're immersed. They're they're telling stories. Oh. You know, oh. no longer am I telling a story. Yeah. They're telling the story. And it's like, oh there we go. There we go. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's it. And then I get to and then I get to ride that wave, so to speak. Yeah, find a flow state with them. And yeah. Where yeah. they're they're creating. Yeah. You're absolutely. Allowing, your creation is allowing them to create in a way. Which I think, I mean, that's a fun way to think about it. like that sounds a little bit like God, you know? It does sound a little bit like God. <laughs> well, okay, so speaking of God, um, how how does your theology inform you? Does do you believe kind of you, you receive your strength, your creativity from divinity, or how does it speak to you? Generally, or... Yeah, um, or, or whatever. Hmm. I mean, God's the most important thing in my life, like, hands down. Right. Um, God saved my life in hmm. 2008, 
uh, in the midst of a massive depression, in the midst of, oh. um, of like the darkest of the dark nights, um, God showed up um, with this powerful spiritual experience and has been the sort of the axis mundi of my life ever since. And yeah, and it's the pursuit of God, the pursuit of a relationship with God, the pursuit of serving God that has really defined my life and, and defined my like lifestyle as well. You know, like, like all of us, you know, I, I get off track and I, you know, I engage in these behaviors or engage in those behaviors that don't serve me. But, but the, the recentering point every time is spiritual practice. In my case, mostly prayer that, um, out loud, verbal, right. almost theatrical prayer. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, is... I, I feel a theme. <laughs> no, indeed, indeed. Um, honestly, I, yeah, yeah. I think that that's tangled up in it too. That's you know, cool. absolutely. That's beautiful, um, though. So theatrical prayer. That's kind of a key spiritual practice, or yeah. prayer in general. Yeah, prayer in general, yeah. and and my best prayer like ends up looking like just weird storytelling. It ends up oh. looking like, like me like performing for God, but not performing in like, oh, I'm this actor taking on this other role, but like like expressing, I guess, I guess expressing, um, maybe more like a musician or something that yeah. is like, I have this thing inside me. I have to get it outside of me, but I can't just do it like discursively. I can't like write you, you know, uh, an essay about it. Like I have to, I have to, I mean, you know more, I'm, I'm not the musician, you're the musician. I have to, um, I have to find the right chord, the right vibration, the right hum, the right flavor um, mm. in order to, to get you to the spirit of the word, if not the letter. Hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. And you've, you found that that's really helped in your, your journey and taken shape. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think when. When my storytelling, whether it's in D and D or whether it's in um, the mythic theater, this uh, <laughs> uh, religious musical theater that I've been doing with uh, another colleague of ours here, at the Graduate Theological Union, uh, who may be on a future future show, uh, um, Tom Emanuel. Tom Emanuel. Yeah. Um, Very so, so whether I'm doing that individual. musical theater, whether I'm doing the D and D that um, that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I can't say um, I'm into similar things, but I, I feel like you're, the way it speaks to you the, is, is inspiring on so many different levels. And Word. We, can, we can take a lot out of that. You know, it's a really um, powerful uh, story. <laughs> um, you know, it's a really powerful. <laughs> indeed. indeed you know, approach to, to just being true to yourself and engaging God in a way that speaks to you. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That reminds me of a colleague of ours. Uh, her, one of her mentors told her this thing that really, really stuck with me and that came up for me um, when you were saying that even though you don't share the same exact interest as mine, but to hear my story connects you with your own story. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what the pastor said was that the most personal is the universal. <laughs> and what he was offering was uh, advice around preaching that, um, that find the most personal thing about you, the most idiosyncratic, the thing that other people aren't gonna be, relate, aren't gonna be able to relate to. Find that thing, and to the degree that you can tell that story, to the degree that you can incarnate that experience for folks, even if they've never been a, a dungeon master or if they've never been a musician or they've never been a Swedenborgian, or they've never been a Unitarian Universalist, that to the degree that you can share your authentic little idiosyncratic story is to the degree that people will be connected with the universal. Mm -hmm. And that, that really, really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and maybe that's why, that's cool. maybe that's why I, I share my story is that I know that when I get lucky, that that my personal can be a doorway to to the universal for folks. Yeah, in a, in a way like a, a microcosm. Yeah, where, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can kind of see the the bigger whole in an individual, or and see ourselves yeah. especially. Yeah, 
or like a, a holon for any of our people that are familiar with Ken Wilber. Um, who's, a holon. Yeah, uh, it's very similar sort of thing that uh, in every in every atom, in every person, in every individual part of the whole is a reflection of it, or like a hologram. What we know about the hologram. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, does that fit into your spirituality at all? It sounds like it, it probably does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like um, like sharing these these journeys with each other, you know, sharing our stories and how we've been inspired um, can inspire. And it's it's great to be able to, to openly uh, communicate about having different ideas and political, religious, whatever. Sure, sure. Um, and just, you know, try to try to hear each other and, and uplift each other um, and meet each other where we're at. Um, well, so thank you. Of course, of course. Yeah. It, you know, it's funny that it just occurs to me, here I am, just did three and a half years of seminary education, and it just occurs to me as you're, as you're relating that, of like, oh, that's what religion is. Like, that's why we retell Jesus' story. That's why we retell the story of Moses. That's why we retell the story of Siddhartha, that... That, oh, that these men and women walked, walked their story, lived their life, and shared it with their communities, who shared it with each other, who shared it with the world because, because, of, because of the power of story, the power of, 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 of sharing. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. that's funny. I never, never thought about it that way. Um, that once upon a time, that there was this, this radical Jew and like, uh, in ancient Palestine who was running around saying like I am one with God and believed yeah. it and arguably was it <laughs> <laughs> and lived that life and shared that story and his friends shared that story and here we are you know several thousand years later um, being connected to the universal through this through this man through this through his story yeah yeah that's cool yeah that's cool <laughs> Well, I think sometimes, you know, sharing a story, um, like a parable, mm-hmm. can speak to people on so many different levels, so many different ways that um, there's something powerful about that versus, you know, trying to spell it out to a T, this is the way it is. Right. You, be- you right. better believe this. Right. And, you know, right. I think once we, once we start categorizing things in such a way that anyone who's not in that category is like, doomed, yeah. you know, we, yeah. we step into some dangerous territory because... Yeah. You know, who are we to really say that? Yeah. And it's such a slippery slope, too, because, like, one, once you've, like, caught a taste of divine truth, like, you want everyone else to have it, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and you'll, you want everyone else to have it, yeah. um, and, and you know how it's been salvific in your life, and you, you want other people to be, to be saved as well, um, to be redeemed, to be liberated, um, to have solace. Um, and... Yeah, so, so it makes sense that we would like codify these stories and that we would codify like laws and make it like and make it sort of rigid and like and under and understandable. Not only rigid, but like understandable. Like here it is. You yeah. know, here's a, here's a simple black and white understanding of it. And, you know, in the slippery slope is like in my theology that the moment that you try to force the truth onto somebody, or the moment that you other someone because they aren't um, aren't un- understanding the truth right now. You've lost the truth. That even that even you can be preaching a message of love and joy, but the way that you go about it for me like is so. I, I guess maybe even more fundamental that um, that to talk about love you have to be love. To talk about salvation you have yeah. to be salvation. And even if. And even like for my, you know, some of my colleagues who don't think they're religious, or some some of my friends, some of my family members, so yeah, on and so forth, who don't call themselves religious, who don't call themselves religious, or, or, or some of them even think that, I mean, some may even think they're damned or something, you know, like or like joke about, or that. their religion is ridiculous, right, or something, right, yeah. um, <laughs> that. But when I hear them, when I see them being love, when I see them being truth, being joy, being wisdom. Like as far as I'm concerned, like I see God in them. I'm yeah. like, oh, you're you're being the thing right now. You are the thing right now. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm not being the thing. Exactly. You know? You, you know, know, we can talk a good game, but are we actually right. embodying the right. love and and uh, the beauty of divinity? I think that as as you're saying, is more important. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's tough. It's powerful. It's tough. Well, it's tough. 
Well, and it's good to have to ask yourself that question. Like, what am I embodying? What am I bringing to the world? You know? Right. Um, yeah, often I think in traditions, a lot of times we codify things because as a community, we like certain ways of doing things. Yeah. And then maybe a hundred years pass and then we're like, this is the only way to do it. Often, right? right? right, right and right. it's... Um, I think allowing for flexibility and actually trying to foster the creativity and openness where, you know, we may not call it the same thing, but in a way we're, we're on the same page, we're right, in the same book, right. uh, in a sense. And um, I think that allows for uh, like a true engagement because then we don't feel like we have to put on a specific air or um, paint ourselves in a specific light or, or say, you know, Jesus's name just right to get right. into the pearly gates. Um, instead, where it's more about what it, what's the quality of our living and, right. and our connection right. with other people right. um, and with divinity. Right. Uh, yeah. Which is the which is the harder journey? I mean, which I think is mm. I mean that's why we often choose like just give me the answer, <laughs> just give me give me black and white, just give me the answer because I want to be good. Mm. You know, I want to I want to be close to God. I want to be a good community member. I want to be a good father, mother, parent, brother, cousin, you know, like whatever, worker. Yeah. Um, yeah, so and you know, and to the alternative of like having to day by day, I mean, even moment by moment, like checking in with myself and like, am I being from a place of love right now? Or am I being from a place of fear right now? Yeah. You know. Like, selfishness or... or selfishness. Like that. Yeah. That's that's hard, you know, and oh, yeah. I, I get it, I, you know, I, get, I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've, I've gone through my own journey of uh, trying to, to kind of tackle my, my selfishness or, mm -hmm. you know, ego, you mm -hmm. know, and that, yeah, it's a tough journey because a lot of times that's what we identify with that. Right. Uh, you know, for me, it may be like some, some type of dominating spirit, right? Like sure. where I want to control what's happening or I, or I get anxious about things that are, you know, actually beyond my control or I'm judgeful, judgmental towards myself or others. And I think all of that, you know, it's just, it's not healthy uh, for me and it's not healthy for other people when I'm kind of embodying um, my selfishness. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's good to question, question your approach to the world and, and the seat that you're in, you know, yeah. what, yeah. what you really identify with because yeah. often, uh, or there's always room to grow, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Hmm. <laughs> so that is what we are up to, folks. We are, <laughs> we are here going to school, and we are here doing our internships, and we are here trying to be aware of what seat that we are in and trying to create the space where others can see what seat they're in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean, we all should be about um, uplifting health in each other and uh, I, I know for me seminary has been a really uh, and a positive journey of of growth and reflection and um, and getting to know diverse peoples and um, that's that's what I really love about the graduate theological union and, and having so many different yeah. uh, uh, you know types of people here it's yeah. you start to realize oh you know we are a community despite our diversity or or actually we're, we're more powerful for because it. Because of it. Because of it, you know. Yeah. And if only we could, you know, if only every space looked like that or, or yeah. tried to. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, uh, thank you, Aaron, for joining us on the Transcendence podcast. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's been wonderful uh, hearing about your journey and uh, it's exciting, like, your, your path forward. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Well... And thank you. Hopefully you can come and back thank on you all. soon. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. If nice you're, if you're still here time. and you're not uh, off ministering some yes. Swedenborgian church, I'll be here. Oh, I am, I am graduating soon, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah, indeed. But uh, yeah, uh, tune in next time and we'll have other guests and um, hopefully uh, just as interesting a lighting situation. Indeed. Bye. Bye.